The hardest part of traveling is determining what to do with your valuable time and if you should spend your hard earned cash on it. By the end of this video, you'll know if the Osaka Amazing Pass will be worth buying. In this video, we'll be exploring 5 places that I visited with the Osaka Amazing Pass. With the Osaka Amazing Pass, you'll be able to explore over 30 destinations for a single fee. Depending on how many things you can squeeze in, that's a lot of value. And if you do buy it, should you buy it for one or two days? Stick around and find out. I like the way you're thinking. I don't really care about the music on the dance floor. I don't really mind all the smoke is in the bathroom. I don't care at all, baby. You got my attention. So you were saying. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. We are on day seven of our Japan travel vlog. First off, we'll be heading over to buy the Osaka Amazing Pass. They allow you to buy up to two days worth of pass. If you buy a one day pass, it's 2,800 yen. Buy a two day pass, 3,600 yen. So you can buy the Osaka Amazing Pass down at Osaka Station. So whenever you get off there from the Shinkansen, stop by and grab yourself an Osaka amazing pass and you have access to a whole variety of tourist attractions here in Osaka plus unlimited subway rides for those two days of course so let's get to it The castle was made into a public park in 1955 and the museum inside the main keep was opened in 1988. Park is a popular site during the cherry blossom season in the spring. Today the castle continues to be a symbol of Osaka and its long history. We are now here at Osaka Castle. This place is incredibly, incredibly beautiful. It is probably the most scenic area I've seen in my whole trip here in Japan. It's just crazy. So far at least, there might be some more, but as of right now, day number seven, this is just crazy, crazy beautiful. Just look at this, a castle, in the background, it's just amazing how beautiful, really incredible people can be. Like all this architecture was made by people. Crazy the amount of ingenuity that <laughs> they had back then. This is the view that the king of the Osaka castle sees every single day. Minus the skyscrapers. Of course you didn't see any skyscrapers, but that is amazing. Look at that view. Here we are at Suten Gaku Tao. We went up. But they sent us back down so that we can get a ticket. You have to get the ticket from the counter back there. So, our last place, we got to skip the line and we didn't have to get a ticket. But this place, we do. This is the ticket right here. There's also a slider here. We're coming right here and we go on. To go up here. There has been some funny, funny reactions from the slider. There was uh, one guy, he was going down and he was screaming like it was Tarzan. Like, Aah! you come out right there. Experience, history, culture, and breathtaking views at Tsutenkaku, Osaka's tower reaching heaven. This iconic 103 meter tower isn't just an architectural marvel, but also a symbol of resilience and a beacon of happiness. We have made it up the Stendaku Tower. After going up to Shibuya Sky, this is a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> it's, it's a nice view though. Climb up to the observatory for a panoramic city view and don't miss rubbing the feet of the resident god of happiness, Billy Ken, for good luck. We're going to just walk around a little bit and head on home. Immerse yourself in the vibrant heart of Osaka with the Dotanbori boat tour. In just 20 minutes, this tour offers an exclusive perspective of the city's iconic neon skyline, including the famed Glico Man sign. 
Sit back and soak in the rich history of Dotanburi, originally a 17th century theater district, all from the comfort of an accessible riverboat. Choose a nighttime ride for an extra sprinkle of magic as the district's dazzling lights dance on the water's surface. Today we're on day eight of our Japan trip and it is raining pretty, pretty hard. It is crazy. We're supposed to continue our amazing Osaka tour pass today. I don't know how that will go with all this rain going on. The winds are wild right now. <laughs> They're pulling everybody. I think these winds or gusts are around 30 miles per hour. Pretty wild out here today in Osaka. Next up, we head to the Umeda Sky Building where the city gets smaller as we get higher. We are now 39 floors above ground level, which is equivalent to about 140 meters. But Lisa, she is afraid of heights. Are you okay? Something about tall views that just leaves the mind wandering. We're here at the Umeda Sky Building. This is a floor where you first enter into when you arrive. This is a very minimalist type of design around here. It's mostly white with little objects to distract you from the outside view there. So now we're gonna be trying this spaghetti-like food is carbonara. Carbonara was how much? The carbonara. That was a little bit like mac and cheese back in the state, like craft mac and cheese. Well, the noodles is slightly thick. The cheese, I can say it is the best I've had, but it's it's an interesting food for the great view. That's what you're really paying for, the view, not the food. Croffle, 700 yen. Is the front, and here is the back. They coated the front with a layer of matcha glaze and drizzled some sugar over it with some matcha powder. This has the most complex taste out of everything here so far. You bite into it, it's like a very chewy mochi. There's matcha coating here, plus the powder gives it a fusion of sugary and a little bitter taste, which bodes very well. It's a nice fusion. Try this bottom part, see if it changes anything. This part is definitely where you want to eat if you don't like the bitter part of the matcha powder. Because the matcha powder, you kind of almost need a more mature taste bud to eat it. It's not for everyone, but this part, for people that don't really enjoy that bitter taste of matcha. And this coffee-like drink, strawberry milk, 600 yen. You know, authentic strawberry milk is very hard to come by. This is not authentic strawberry milk. I think this whole trip here, Lisa has been trying to look for any type of authentic strawberry dairy type of beverage or consumable. But this is definitely not it. It's a, uh, it's uh, it's all right, but not authentic. Doesn't taste like Pepto Bismol, but it doesn't taste authentic either. I think it's decent for what it is. Well, we're gonna finish this up and explore around a little bit more. I have no idea why I'm doing this, just walking out here in the wet rain with this view. It doesn't seem like a good idea. Oh, but look down there. Looks pretty insane down there. I'm all wet and done. My goodness! It's so fast! Good thing I can't see anything. Because my glasses broke. All right, we got the glasses all fixed up now. If you guys are ever around and need your glasses fixed, check out Zoff. Or you just need new frames in general, go to Zoff. We're now headed to the zoo. The zoo is apparently outside and we're hoping that may still be open, but really no guarantee. This is the first time we've been to the zoo where it's raining. Don't really know what to expect. Tenoji Zoo, one of Japan's oldest and most diverse zoos, located in the heart of Osaka, with about 1,000 animals of 200 different species. You can come face to face with everything from majestic Asian elephants to adorable koalas, and even rare creatures like the Japanese giant salamander. Don't miss the unique chance to observe hippos from an underwater perspective, the hippopotamus house. 
It looks like he's reading the sign. <laughs> Almost fell. Step into meticulously created ecological exhibit such as the African savanna, witnessing different species coexisting as they would in the wild. A little bit slower day today. The zoo was pretty chilly, at least uh, was very cold. But seeing all these animals, it's pretty amazing. My head looks kind of weird right now because I have the umbrella just tucked into my backpack. We're about to head out. It's still raining so much. Finally going home. Today's the first night that we're getting home. Maybe before seven. It's about 